Amen. Now God has given us a magnificent word on today. Amen. Amen. So that's what we're going to get and that's what we're going to receive. Amen. Amen. So for those of you that don't know, we are in the book of Revelation. Somebody say Revelations. Revelation. We're in Revelation chapter what, y'all? 18. Uh-huh. Revelation chapter what? 18. 18. So everybody turn your Bibles to the book of Revelation chapter 18. God has given us a mighty word on today, y'all. Amen? Amen. So everybody just bring your hearts and your minds in. I think I need to pray. Y'all pray with me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we call upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. We call upon you to give you praise and to say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah and thank you, Lord. Father, we ask you to please forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for everything we've done wrong, for everything we said wrong. Father, we ask you to bring your Holy Spirit in this place. Father, we ask you to remove any emotions out the door. We ask you to move any demonic holes out the door. Father, we pray that you have your way in this service. Let nothing block your word from going forth in the name of Jesus, Father. Father, in Jesus' name, just have your way. And I ask you to just touch every heart, Heavenly Father. Touch every heart in here, Heavenly Father. Give them peace. Give them peace in their mind. Give them peace in their heart. And give them joy in their soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen. Amen. All right, y'all. We're in the book of Revelation, chapter 18. And the word of God says this. Before I get started, I'm going to give y'all the subject that God has given me to give y'all. And the subject that God has given me to give y'all is this. I want everybody to repeat this subject after me. Say, the door won't be open much longer. The door won't be open much longer. Say it again. Say, the door will not be open much longer. The door will not be open much longer. Now, he's giving us a topic to go along with this. Now, this is the topic that the Lord has given us. Everybody repeat this after me. Say, come out while you can. Come out while you can. Say, come out while you can. Come out while you can. He said, the door won't be open much longer. So he's telling us to come out while we can. Some of us are stuck in our own ways. And the Lord is holding the door open. And he's saying, come out while you can. Some of us is holding on to some addiction. And the Lord is saying, come out oh, yeah. while you can, while the door is still open. Amen? Amen. So listen, y'all. Revelation chapter 18. The word of God says this. After this, I saw another angel coming down from heaven. He had great authority. And the earth was illuminated by his splendor. Amen? Amen. Y'all, for, for those of y'all that don't know what illuminated mean, illuminated mean a bright light. So verse 1 says that the angel came down illuminating the earth. Illuminated means bright light. So this angel presence was brightened. He, he brightened the whole earth when he came down. Amen? Amen? This was the glory of this angel. He came down Calvary in great splendor. And he illuminated the earth. Amen? He was bright. He had the glory of God on him. Amen? Amen. That's right, y'all. That's what we want. We want the glory of God on us. Yes. Amen? Amen? That's right, y'all. Listen, y'all. He said, he said, he had great authority, and the earth was illuminated by his splendor. Verse 2 said, with a mighty voice, he shouted. So this angel, this angel shouted y'all with a mighty voice. He said, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. Jesus. So look, y'all, this angel came down, Will. And he was he had a bright light on him, amen. amen. And he, he was rejoicing that this, this place called Babylon had fallen. Remember, I told y'all that Babylon has become the whole world because the whole world are, parti are parti uh, participating in the same sin. Amen? amen. So the whole world has become Babylon. Amen. And this angel came down and he was rejoicing because Babylon has fallen. He's talking about the world, y'all. This world is getting ready to fall because God's judgment is getting ready to come upon this whole world. 
So the angel came down, Keisha, he was happy. This is what we this is what we've been waiting for. It's time for God to pay back these sinners, these wicked sinners that don't want to repent. I ain't talking about the ones that realized they was a sin and said, Lord, forgive me. Have mercy. I surrender. I ain't talking about them. I'm talking about the ones that wanted to continue to practice sin. The ones that didn't want to stop smoking. The ones that didn't want to stop drinking. The ones that didn't want to stop fornicating. Committing adultery. Amen? Listen, y'all. He said, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. She has become a dwelling for demons. Mm. That's what the world is becoming. A dwelling place for demons. If you look out in the world right now, you can see some people filled with demons. Amen. 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 Need deliverance. Amen. That's why it's important for us to walk up right in Jesus so we can lay hands and cast them demons out. Amen. Right. That's right. We're not supposed to be afraid of them demons. Good. We're supposed to have strength in the Lord in his Holy Spirit, to cast them out. In the name of who? Jesus. Amen. In the name of Yahshua. Amen. Somebody say, cast them out. Don't be afraid of them demons, y'all. And don't let the demons steal your joy. Because that's their job, amen. Y'all keep on rejoicing like this angel is rejoicing. He came down happy, shot with a mighty voice. Falling, falling is Babylon. Jesus, Jesus. It's time. Amen. 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 It says she has become a dwelling for demons, y'all. Listen, y'all. Let me read my notes. Verse 2 says his voice is a mighty. His voice is mighty. He spoke with great authority as he rejoiced that the sinful and wicked place of Babylon had fallen, meaning this place has become a wicked place full of demons and a haunt, which means, let me, let, me go, let me go ahead and read the scripture before I get to that. It says, she has become a dwelling for demons and a haunt for every impure spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean, detestable animal. Do y'all see that, y'all? Now listen, the word haunt means a hangout. Jesus. This is what this, that is what this world has become. A hangout for demons. Jesus. 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 Do y'all see that? A haunt for every impure spirit. Impure means what? Wicked. That's right. A haunt for every unclean bird. Even the birds are hateful. Even the animals got this spirit in them now. That's, that's terrible, ain't it? And I just saw it. Did you, know, you can look at some of these dogs and anything and see that old evil spirit in it. These animals have become hateful because the spirit has have entered into them. Amen? Amen? And that's why this angel is rejoicing because he's coming out. He knows it's time for Lord Jesus to clean it out, to get rid of all of it. Amen? Amen. The time is coming. And that's why he's telling us. He's telling us, he said, the door won't be open much longer. He said, come out while you can. He is warning us over and over and over, Will. He said, come out while you can. Yes, yes. Don't wait another day. He said, you come out right now while you can. Your time is now. You might not have tomorrow. This might be your last day on earth. In this church service. My God. And the Lord is saying, come out while you can. Amen. Amen. Listen, y'all. Verse 3 says, for all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries. Do y'all see that? Listen, y'all. Verse 3 says, all the nations, meaning the whole world. Babylon has become the whole world. Amen. All nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries. Which means all have committed adultery. Jeez. Now listen, y'all. Adultery ain't just when you step out on your husband or your wife. That's, right. That's adultery too. Right. But it's another type of adultery. Yes. When we are not being faithful to God. That's, right. That's, right. That's adultery too. Yes, Lord. If you're not being faithful to God, then you are committing adultery. Because we are the bride of Jesus. Yes. We are the church is the bride of Jesus. Yes, yes, 
Amen. So therefore, if we doing things that don't please Jesus, then guess what we're doing? Committing adultery. That's why Jesus said you sinful and you adulterous generation. He called us like it is because that's what we are. Cheating on God. Everybody done fell short. My Everybody done had sex with that prostitute. Jesus. In one way or another. Amen. 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 And the Lord is telling us, he said, come out. Yes, <clears throat> he said, come out. Come out of her. You got some people that don't want to come out because they are enjoying the adultery. Jesus. They are enjoying the pleasure of the sin. Sin makes some people feel great and good. Jesus. You know why? Because they got the wrong spirit inside of them. Jesus. Because if you had the spirit of the Lord, when you commit adultery against the Lord, what that spirit inside of you going to tell you? Yeah. That spirit inside of you going to make you feel bad. Yeah. It's going to bring you to conviction. Yeah. Because the Lord correct those he loves. Somebody say, Lord, correct me. Lord, correct you. Say, correct my mind, Lord. Correct my mind. Correct my heart. Correct my soul. That's right. We need correction. Yes, Lord. Amen. Jesus. Jesus. Listen, y'all. Jesus. Everybody in this world is drinking the madding of her wine. Sleeping with that old whoremonger, y'all. This, this is what the Bible described this prostitute, man. Because this prostitute refused to repent. So the Lord had to call it like it is. When you refuse to repent. But there are some that may have committed adultery in their lives. We all have. Amen. We all once was prostitutes and stuff like that. But guess what? It's a good thing when Jesus gave us the grace of God. And we can repent. See, it's a beautiful thing when a prostitute say, Lord, I'm sorry. I don't want to live like this no more. That means that this person have came to the right mind. Amen. This person that came to the law. So guess what? Now this person ain't no more, no, no longer a prostitute. This person is called a what? A child of God. All because the Holy Spirit and God have transformed this, this prostitute. Amen. But you got to want to be transformed. I'm keeping it real, y'all. I'm keeping it real. A lot of churches, a lot of churches, a lot of men and women of God will not preach this type of truth. They'll preach what make you feel good and keep you coming back. If this word here make you leave and don't turn, don't come back no more, but you will always remember this word, let God's will be done. Because I'd rather for you to remember this powerful word than to sit up in here and feel comfortable in your sin like everything okay. I'm trying to tell y'all because pastor really trying to get it right. I'm not playing with God. Amen. And I wouldn't suggest that y'all play with him neither. Listen, y'all. He said the kings of the earth committed adultery with her. Jesus, no. We can't hide nothing for Jesus. He said, and the merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxuries. Y'all, do y'all see that, y'all? Listen, the merchants mean this. For those of you that don't know what merchants mean. Merchants means different companies and corporations, businesses, People have spent their lives serving the companies and corporations and have neglected God. Yeah. Lord Jesus, instead of worshiping God, the worship, the worship, these people worship the companies and these luxuries that brought that. Amen? That's what's going on, y'all. Many people in the world are serving the job. Serving our jobs, serving these companies, these corporations, worshiping them, Jesus. giving the job more time than we give God, Jesus. giving the business more time than we giving God business. Amen. Amen. So many people are enjoying the luxuries, Heaven. They are enjoying the luxury of this. Amen. Amen. And that takes their attention away from God. Amen. That's why you got so many rich people ain't paying God no attention because they are. They up on 20, 20, 30, 50 floors high. 100 floors high in the sky. In them luxury buildings. Everything brand new. They got swimming pools everywhere. They got somebody catering to them. 
They can get women coming in anytime they want to. They can get men coming in anytime they want to. They got all the nice TVs, all the cars. They got all the riches of the world. But they're missing the, rain, the main thing. God. And that's what God is upset with. These people are serving the companies. They are worshiping these companies and the luxury that come from them. That's what we do in the world. Get a new handbag. Forget all about God. Get a new jacket. Forget all about God. I don't want to show this off. That make that, that right there make people become make, that right there make people think that them think of themselves like they're gods. When they get clean and fresh, everybody start paying them some attention. Then they become gods. They want for people to praise them. Man, you look nice. Man, you fresh. Man, where you get that? Where you get that from? Right or wrong, y'all. Man, people are so silly, man. We are so silly, son. We are caught up in this material stuff. Yes. None of this stuff don't matter. No, I'd be outside looking, I'd be outside talking to God in my yard. I'd be looking around. I'd be like, Lord, you sure brought me a long way. Yeah. Man, I'm so humble, y'all. And I realize that I'm so humble because I can look at the stuff that God has allowed me to own and have. And it still don't make me feel better than nobody. I look at this stuff like, man, this is nothing. This stuff is nothing, none of it, man. Because the greatest joy that I have in my life is my relationship with joy. It ain't even with my wife. My wife can't give me the joy that Jesus gave me. I can't give her the joy that Jesus gave her. Nobody or nothing in this world can give me that joy that God gave me. So that's why you gotta remain humble in all that you get, amen? Just because we living in luxury, that don't mean nothing. We still got to praise God. Amen. <laughs> Some people get that and lose their mind, lose their way. You, you know how many people have lost their mind and lost their way, Kevin, all because they got a new Lamborghini. They got a new opportunity to be on TV before the world. They get rock gold chains. And... But then at the award show, they got enough, they got nerve to get up there. Well, I like to thank God. God the one giving me the ideas to write these songs. And, uh, you mean tell me a holy and righteous God gave you an idea to write a song full of curses? You you tell me a lie. You better stop. You better stop lying on my God. You better stop lying on my God. Right or wrong, brother. God is holy. God didn't give you a word, a song full of cuss words. But you won't get on stage and I like to thank God. Yeah, you thinking Satan? That's who you think. You ain't thinking Jesus. You ain't thinking God. People sleep. They caught up in the luxury. These companies, corporations. That's where they caught up in, Keisha. And they don't even know they sleep. Always want an award. But don't even know that we need to be laboring for the eternal reward. Which is that crown that Jesus is going to give us. The one that's, that, the one that's not going to be corrupt. It's not going to rust. Amen. It's forever. That's what we need to be working towards, my brother. Jesus. Listen, y'all. He now look. Now here come the warning. It says warning to escape Babylon's judgment. Somebody say verse four. Verse four. That's where we at. Verse four. It says, "Then I heard another voice from heaven say, 'Come out of her.' Somebody say it with me. Say, 'Come out of her.' Yeah. That's right. Did y'all see what the Lord is telling us? He said, 'Come out of her. Her who? Who is her? <laughs> who is her? Babylon." We already know what Babylon is because we, we learned about that the, uh, last week, right? Yeah. She's a prostitute, right? Yeah, that's, right? That's trying to cause everybody in the world to fall up under that spirit of prostitution. Amen? Amen? And that's what it is. And that's what the Lord is telling everybody. He said, come out of her. Come out of her ways. Come out of her sin. Stop getting drunk. Stop getting high. Yeah, yeah. The Lord didn't create you to get high. The Lord didn't create us to get drunk. He didn't create us to put smoke in our body. If he, if he wanted us to have that, he would already attach it to our body. He gave us everything we needed to live. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Listen, y'all. He said, come out. He said, come out my what? People. That's right. Come on now, y'all. Y'all see this, right? <coughs> the Lord said, come out, my people. He 
It says, so that you will not share in her what? So if we don't come out of Babylon, guess what? We're going to have to share the same sin that God going to judge her by. And we don't want that punishment, I'm trying to tell you, because God is not playing with Babylon. Babylon is already being judged. God's wrath is being poured out on Babylon. So if you're one of them ones that's thinking something sweet, thinking you ain't got to change, full of pride, thinking you can stay in your own way, man, you better humble yourself. You better humble yourself. I'm trying to tell you, it ain't nothing to play with. Amen? Amen. He said, God is warning us, y'all. He said, come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins. He said, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. Now, this could mean that God is telling us to come out of America. But when you think about it, if we leave America and go to another country, they still doing the same sin over there. So it ain't really necessary saying that God is saying come out of America. He's saying come out of her ways. Get your heart and your soul right with me. So when those plagues do come, you'll be protected by the blood of Jesus. Just like in the old time when they put the, the blood over their doorpost, when that death angel came through and he bypassed them because they was covered in the blood. We got to make sure we are covered in the blood. So when them plagues do come, like coronavirus, or whatever new plague is coming to the earth, when it comes, Calvin, we'll be covered. But how can we be covered by the blood if we won't come out? Huh? Listen, y'all. Verse 5. Verse 5 says, For her sins are piled up to heaven. Do y'all see that? Y'all read that part with me. Verse 5. For her sins are piled up to heaven, and God has remembered her crime. That's a bad thing. The sins of this world, Heather, is piled up to heaven. God has remembered her crime. Now listen, if God remembers your crimes and your sins, guess what? That means what, y'all? That you have not repented. If God remembered every bad thing that you do in your life when you stand before him, it's going to be because simply you have not repented. You have simply not said, Lord, forgive me for my sins and turn away from your sins. So you, so those same sins that you choose to hold on to, guess what they're going to do? They're going to follow you in front of God. The same sins going to follow you in front of God. And you ain't going to be able to stand before God and lie. You can't lie to a holy and righteous God because life itself going to testify against you. Like going to say, yep, yeah, you did do that. Yeah, you was over there. Yeah, you was smoking that. Yeah, you was drinking that. You ain't going to be able to say nothing but take your judgment. And then when hell opened up and you hear all them voices screaming, crying, you going to know that you should have got, you got yourself together. Amen? Amen. Real talk, y'all. Real talk, man. Come out of her. Somebody say, come out of her. Come out of her. That's terrible, y'all. It says, for her sins are piled up to heaven, and God has remembered her crimes. Verse 6 says, give back to her as she have given. <laughs> he said, pay her back, though, <laughs> for what she have done. I mean, that scripture it explains itself. So ain't nobody that's down here practicing sin and that's that, that refuse to come out of that, out of sin. You ain't going to get away with it. God said pay her double. That's double the wrath. Double the punishment. Ain't none of us want to receive that punishment. I'm trying to tell y'all. Because no human ever experienced anything like it. Amen? I can't even describe to y'all how it's going to be, but I can try to put some fear in your heart and tell y'all to come out of her Amen. so you won't have to experience that. Real talk, man. It's not a game. See, this is the type of stuff that pastors need to be preaching around the world. That's why people come to church and stay stuck and they see it because you didn't say nothing to, to, trick, to hit their mind and hit their heart. So when they leave, they're like, man, I still remember what pastor said when I left, man. He said I need to come out of her. 
next time you pick up that blunt or whatever you're smoking or whatever you're drinking, you're going to think about it. You're like, man, I need to come out of her. If I don't, you mean I'm telling this, I'm going to let this right here send me to hell? Right. <laughs> I'm going to let this send me to hell forever? Is it worth it? Because in hell, you can't even smoke that. You won't be smoking. <laughs> in hell, we can't even drink that. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Listen, y'all, we almost at the end. We're going just a little bit further, we're going to be done. <clears throat> it says, pour her a double portion. Turn the page, y'all. Y'all turn the page. Yeah. It says, pour her a double portion for her own cup. Man, it, mm -hmm. the Babylon is going to get punished. It's coming. Verse 7. It says, give her as much torment and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself. Jesus. So y'all think about this. For all the luxury that we give ourselves. Jesus. All the sin that we commit just to stay in this luxury. My God. Amen. God said you give her that same amount of punishment right there. All the pleasure we get from doing drugs. All the pleasure we get from getting drunk. All the pleasure we get from hurting one another. God said you give them double. Jesus. Or that punishment right there. Right there. My Lord. Jesus. It might be funny now. Jesus. Oh, you might be enjoying it now. Thinking you're doing something. But when double comes, <laughs> you're going to wish you had not have did it. Amen. 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 Listen, y'all. It says, in her heart, she boasts. Did I skip? No, I said, I'm right there. I said, and the glory and luxury she gave herself. I'm right there. I said, in her heart, she boasts and sit and throne as a queen. I am not a widow, she says. Listen, y'all. This nation, Babylon, claims to not be a widow. Now, how many of y'all know what a widow is? A widow is a woman that have that was married to a man, and the man died. So America, all these countries around the world <clears throat> are living without their husband man. So that makes them a widow. And that's what makes Babylon a widow. And now Babylon sits pride, pridefully, Keisha, she sits on her throne. Amen, saying I'm not a widow. You know why? Because she has filled herself up with pride in her luxuries, in the companies and corporations, thinking that she don't need God. So that's why it said, that's why the Bible says, she, she said that I'm, I'm not a widow. But you are a widow. If you are not serving God, if you are not connected to God, if you don't have a relationship with God, then guess what? You are a widow. That's the same as your husband died and you ain't got your husband. You ain't got your covering. You are a widow. Do y'all see that? Yes. Listen, she's listen. He said, I, I sit enthroned as a queen. That means she's sitting with pride, full of pride. She enjoying these pleasures. Adulteries, killing God's people. She enjoying it. Listen, y'all, verse 8 says, therefore, in one day, somebody say one day. One day. That's right. In one day, her plagues will overtake her. Now, she may have enjoyed the pleasure and luxury toy all her life. She may be rich. Babylon may enjoy the pleasure and the luxuries of this stuff all their lives. Amen? Amen. That's how people is. People are enjoying sin all the days of their life. Enjoying turning up. Oh, man, the turn up was real last night. <laughs> oh, man. Las Vegas don't owe me nothing. Florence don't owe me nothing. Oh, but God owe you something. God owe us up. Amen. Amen. People are enjoying their life, enjoying the turn up. <laughs> God is going to give them double. Amen. It says, therefore, one day. So in one day, y'all, she's going to be overtaken. The world is going to be overtaken in one day. 
one day, all it's going to take to make Babylon fall. One day. Look how many years it took to build these buildings. These cities. Look how many years it took. But in one day, Calvin, one day, it's going to happen. We at the end, y'all. It says, it says, death, mourning, and famine. She will be consumed by what? Fire. She will be consumed by fire. She For mighty is the Lord God who judges her. Mighty. Amen. 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 So y'all, God has given us a powerful word on today. And it's simple as this. He's saying, come out. Somebody say it again. Say, come out. come out. Somebody say, come out of her. Come out of her. Because that door is not going to be open long. Who is the door? Jesus. Jesus is the door. That door is going. It's not going to be open long, Heather. People think they got all their lives to walk through that door and say, Lord, forgive me. What are they going to do with Jesus? Shut that door and say, uh-oh. God said, the Father say, it's time. Go back, split that sky, and judge the world. Bring the wrath down. Then people gonna see him coming in the sky. They gonna be like, "Oh Lord, forgive me." Too late. All right, y'all. Go ahead. Can you repeat me and make sure all the things out of me? Come on, come on, man. Come with it, brother. You got to come with it because you was uncovering. Come on. Come with it. I don't know, I don't know y'all's situation, right? But you are the man of the house. God created the man to lead the woman. So it's your job, it's your duty, man, to lead her in the right direction. So you gotta, you might have to take off some stuff. You got to put down some stuff. And you got to lead her in the right direction. Not only that, you got to lead yourself, man. You got to let God lead you. So you got to have a relationship with God so God can tell you and train you on how to lead your wife. Just in case some little kids come in the picture, y'all got to lead the kids. You don't want your kids to end up in hell, do you? No, man. So you got to be a leader. That's why I told you to come whenever she comes because you are you a covering. You got to cover your woman, cover your wife, man. Amen? Amen. So, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to know both of y'all. Thank you, Jesus. Both of y'all repeat this prayer after me. To Heavenly Father, I call on you in the name of Jesus Christ to ask for forgiveness for my sins. Forgive me, Lord, for I am a sinner. I need your grace. Wash me in your blood. Wash me clean. Clean my heart. Clean my mind. Give me the right spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Say, I receive it. I believe it. Right now. In Jesus' name. Come on, y'all. Say, I'm saved. Say, I'm delivered. I'm set free. Say, Satan, get your hands off of me. It's done, Heather. It's done. Amen. It's done. It's done together. That, that was the best way 